This is Neil Osterweil at the American Society of Hematology 2012 annual meeting. I spoke with Dr. Elias Shabur from the MD Anderson Cancer Center about the state of the art in CML therapy. Well, I'm so fortunate to be in an era where I can choose for my patients. We're moving from prescribing anything to every patient to what we call treatment a la carte in CML today. CML treatment is a success story in cancer. It's a model uh, that we can hopefully apply into other cancers. From a disease, as I mentioned, where survival used to be six to seven years and fatal outcome to today, where patients can expect to have a normal lifespan. Frontline therapy, we have three options today, nilotinib, dazatinib, and imatinib. When you fail TKIs, what do we have? We have nilotinib and dazatinib remaining good options. Buzotinib was recently added the treatment of CML. We have almost actually recently approved and we're looking forward to get for another drug to get an approval called ponilatinib in patients who failed TKIs and eventually acquired universal mutation called 315i that can cause resistance to all DKIs. So in a second line I have these drugs I can pick efficacy wise are more or less similar safety profile is a little bit different so we can select based on our patient profile the drug that suits him the best. We have the mutation profile that can help us as well selecting the best treatment to be given. That being said, if you have somebody with, who failed everything in at 15i Punatib is a good fit as well, that may be used a third line or even earlier based on the condition we can discuss or at least 15i mutations. And these results op obtained are durable and hopefully can put the patient back on a curve, optimizing their long-term outcome. And that's why I say today, outcome of CML patients is almost normal, like having a normal lifespan. And CML has become like diabetes or hypertension, where you can take a pill and you do well at the long run. The next challenge for us is, can we stop? Can we cure like these patients where really they won't take anything? A lot of research are being done in that setting with them hopefully one day to what they call eradicate everything and patient can stop the drug. Short, long story short, several options, great efficacy, one message for our patient, do not stop therapy, we're not yet ready for the prime time stopping therapy. Are there any compounds that you know of now in the laboratory or in early uh, phase one testing that are particularly promising? I think question of TKIs, we have plenty. Uh, what we are testing is eradication of the minimal disease, not necessarily through a combination of TKIs, but maybe a combination of drugs with certain different mechanisms of action, like we can hedgehog inhibitors, we can target uh, jack inhibitors, hypomating agents, peg interferon, omastetaxine. This in combination with the TKI we have that hopefully can eradicate the minimal disease and eventually lead the cure of the disease by stopping the drug and keep them keep patient alive without disease. That is the next challenge and it's where the phase one, phase two are being assessed with the new drugs and in combination with TKIs. Now one thing is left I would like to mention is this come at a price. Who's going to pay? So the idea as well among experts is first of all come up with the prognostic factors up front from day one Patient A should get drug A, patient B should get drug B. We're not there yet, but that will save, will help a lot. One. Second, we know that early responses are really important. So therefore, what we're looking for is to have what we call induction therapy, have a deep response early on, and then maybe maintaining with the different strategies. These are questions to be resolved in the clinical trials, and the future will tell us whether we're wrong or not. Mm -hmm.